the ships that only um, service the oil rigs. After a while, President Obama um, asked me to come to Washington as in the Rose Guard, that's when he announced it, to become the 18th United States Surgeon General. And I thought I'd just tell you what the Surgeon General does. Some people don't know, but some people do. Um, we, most people know that the Surgeon General tells you not to smoke. <laughs> and while that's really important, we do um, initiate um, various campaigns and public health issues, and I'll talk about some of those. But the other role is, is what you heard of. We command the um, public, United States Public Health Service. It's a branch of the military. Um, we always say it's the branch that does not, one of the two branches that does not carry a gun. We shoot you with a needle. Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, particularly in black Americans and particularly among men. She also, as a social psychologist, um, she also focuses on social determinants of health and chronic disease illness survivorship. She, her work includes a focus on cancer detection and risk reduction.
mom say that you are? Okay, if you're thinking about that for a second, let me ask you something of an even more encompassing question, which is who do you say that you are? We speak honestly today as people dealing with an explosive issue, race in America. This is a time of anxiety for even inviting a black speaker listening to a speech about race. This is a time of anxiety for going into the classroom to discuss race, ethnicity, gender. There's fear of saying the wrong thing, making someone feel guilty, someone else angry. And then there's doubt. There's doubt and frustration. People ask, when will everyone be satisfied that we have achieved equality, diversity, social justice? Sometimes people say to me, because of the work I've done, when are we going to find the next Dr. King? <laughs> Let the church say amen to that. <clears throat> I say amen to that because, again, I was talking with the Rosensteins, people from Brooklyn. I grew up in Brooklyn. My family was in public housing in Brooklyn. And it was my mom, my sister, my brother, and me in very cramped circumstances. As an immigrant kid, I arrived in America at four, and I had no connections to anybody, not anybody with money, that's for sure certainly not political power. I went to school though, I went to school, I did my best in school, I went to church, I got involved. I loved to read, so what did I read? I read comic books, children's books, school books, and here's the thing for me, given you know who I am now, I read newspapers. We were talking about newspapers before, how they're going away, and for younger generation, they don't even have newspapers in hand. So thank you all for being a tremendous part of this. It's an honor to join you again for a showcase. It's an example of what we can do together and what this university, for our guests who are here today, we're one of about eight or nine in the country that has on a contiguous campus this deep and broad array of disciplines and colleges. That lends itself to transdisciplinary research that we can work between, among, and across disciplines to tackle what are seemingly intractable problems that challenge Kentucky and this country every day. So I want to thank all of you for posing hard questions and more importantly, answering those questions. It is how we advance Kentucky in everything we do, and that is and will remain a North Star. T. Johnson. As a part of celebrating the 75th year, we are recognizing this here at the Unite Research Showcase. Lyman T. Johnson successfully won a lawsuit against the University of Kentucky resulting in him becoming the first black student to attend classes at the university. I would not be standing here today if it were not for Lyman T. Johnson. I have the honor of welcoming our president, Dr. Eli Capilouto. President Capilouto demonstrates great care and compassion with an unwavering and intentional commitment to equity. I've had the opportunity to speak with several faculty Our researchers have talked about the impact that UNITE has had in the community and across the Commonwealth. Overall, UNITE has invested $1.87 in faculty research and $1.1 in doctoral student support. <laughs> I can proudly say that we also 
grown our research portfolio from 32 million in FY21 to nearly 63 million in FY23. Thank you. This is the result of your hard work, so thank you so much. Allow me also to give a special thank you to all the individuals that make the work we do possible. First, Leah Holton. Woo! 